Prostate health is something most men don't want to talk about. Yeah, but September is Prostate Cancer Awareness Month, and it's time to hear some important information that could save a life. Joining us now is Dr. Brett Laven. He is a urologist specializing in prostate care and robotic surgery with Aurora Healthcare. Nice to have you this morning. Good morning. Thanks for Thank having me. Thank you so much. Thanks. Let's talk first about um, w something that you call voiding dysfunction. What is it? Well, I, I guess simply stated, it's simply difficulty urinating and and we see a lot of men that come in the office that have had a weakened stream over the course of many years or frequent urination during the day or, or even in the nighttime, which can lead to decreased energy, impact their wife or partner so that they get decreased sleep as well. Mm -hmm. And so they can become quite bothersome and decrease their quality of life. Mm -hmm. How common is that? Well, I think it's estimated about 50, 70 percent of men over 50 have urinary symptoms. We see a lot of men in their 40s and even 30s that have urinary symptoms as well. So I often tell people in the office, I'd, I'd be more surprised if you didn't have some urinary symptoms th than if you did. So Is that a common. sign or an early symptom perhaps of prostate cancer? It's usually not. It's, mm -hmm. it's more often than not, it's not something to be worried about unless it's actually bothering you. So typically if someone comes in the office, you know, we like to rule out things that might potentially be dangerous. Um, and then if it's not something dangerous, we just sit and have a conversation as to whether it's worthwhile to do something about the urinary symptoms. Some mm -hmm. men don't need any treatment. If, yeah. it, if it is worthwhile, what are some of the treatments? Well, we were, we were talking previously about energy drinks and coffee mm -hmm. and whatnot, and sometimes it's just modifying lifestyle. Mm -hmm. uh, but we, I see a number of young men that come in that they may drink three or four cups of coffee, a monster energy, you know, energy drink or so, and uh, that, that will make you go to the bathroom a lot. So sometimes just as simple as modifying your diet and, uh, and intake uh, can be helpful. There's, um, we offer physical therapy that can help for this. There's a number of medications uh, that can help with the symptoms. And there's some uh, therapies that are very non-invasive that also can be very helpful. That's what I was going to ask you, too, because if medication isn't working or people try lifestyle changes, are there um, treatments now available that can help with these symptoms as well? Yeah. Traditionally, we used to wait until all therapies failed before we would consider some of the interventions. And now as some of these interventions are less and less invasive, and we see a number of people that just don't like being on medications anymore. So a lot of them will opt for these less invasive therapies. We do an office-based procedure that's called microwave therapy, where a, a man will come in the office and it takes about 30, 45 minutes. They'll might listen to their iPod or, or read a book and they'll leave. And within a short time, they will have improved urinary symptoms just from an office-based procedure. What about when we kind of move on to prostate cancer? Who should be screened and, and who's at risk for something like prostate cancer? It's, it's a very controversial topic. And as, as you may know, it's, it's been in the news a lot in the mm -hmm. past year or two. So there's a number of different organizations and they all have different criteria for screening. So I, as a urologist, we have the American Urology Association and they just recently uh, released new guidelines that actually dramatically changes how we screen men. It's, it's recommended based upon these, uh, this uh, new doctrine, if you will, that men 55 to 69 be screened with a PSA test, which is a blood test, and a prostate exam. And that's not to say that men younger than 55 shouldn't be screened. Mm -hmm. Certainly uh, men that are high risk, which we'd say African-American men, uh, men that have a strong family history of prostate cancer should discuss it with their doctor. And I think that's the important thing. There really are a number of pros and cons or uh, risks and benefits to screening. And it, it's very important that you actually sit down with your doctor and say, hey, is this right for me? Should I be screened? And what's the benefit? And what, what might I lose if I don't get screened for prostate well, cancer? What's the bottom line in terms of the controversy yeah. about screening for, P for <laughs> prostate cancer? So we know that a number of men will develop the disease. It's incredibly common. About one in six men will develop the disease in their lifetime. And even if you look at studies that have been done for men that have died from other causes, people in their 20s and 30s may have small prostate cancers. We've done such a good job of detecting these things early that sometimes we detect such a small, non-aggressive tumor that it requires no therapy at all. And the therapy can actually be more risk to the patient than the cancer. And that's what we want to avoid. But the, the difficulty, of course, is knowing, well, how do I know if I'm one of those people that needs treatment mm -hmm. or if I'm one of these people who shouldn't be treated? And that's where a good conversation with your doctor comes in and you establish a trusting relationship. And yeah, it takes some time to go mm -hmm. over that. Because otherwise, if you're waiting until you're 55, you may not find it until it's advanced. Is that part of the controversy? Well, possibly. I think there's certainly some people that, that need to be screened earlier. And I would mm -hmm. encourage anybody who's African-American and anybody who has a family history, brothers, uncles, uh, fathers, uh, whatnot, that have it to be screened earlier. Um, the, the 
we think that the greater risk is actually that we detect a number of cancers that really don't require treatment. Oh, okay. But, th but again, that's a difficult thing to, to know. We have some newer tests that help with that. We have some genetic tests. And that's why we encourage you to go, you know, talk to your doctor about it because it is a difficult uh and the, yeah. uh, the, the robotic surgery, I know, is reducing mm -hmm. a lot of the, you know, um, the effects that surgery for prostate cancer can have, which is wonderful, and I know you're involved in that. You know, in your information, you make the point that men often avoid talking to their physician about urinary bladder prostate issues. Um, and just because they go to see a physician or surgeon with a concern doesn't mean that you will nece necessarily need surgery. There are a lot of other options, which is great to know. So you want to discuss it with your doctor, weigh the treatment options, and think about the pros and cons. You can find out more about prostate health by visiting this website. It's aurora.com slash prostate aurora.org. Did I say com? Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> aurora.org slash prostate. And the phone number is 888-649-6892. Nice to have you Thanks, on the show. Dr. Thank Lehman. you. Thanks, guys.